The Raptors can't sweep the mini two game set with the Philadelphia 76ers. Despite a valiant effort after a poor first quarter, Philly takes it 109 102. The Raptors record now 16 and 16 on the year. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Raptors Nightcap. Randy Urban alongside Paul Jones, Leo Routens, and Sherman Hamilton. I'll start with you, Sherm. Was it just something that, that Philly was doing defensively, or were the Raptors just cold here to start this game? A little bit of both. You don't want to look at Philadelphia and say that they didn't do anything to hurt the Raptors to start the game. I thought they did a better job in terms of their effort overall on a defensive end. You can tell that Doc Rivers challenged them to be a better, more active defensive team in this game. And they started the first quarter like that. And and the Raptors really weren't able to get any type of flow going. And, and credit Philadelphia for that. And obviously the Raptors, after the first quarter, got it together but they dug such a deep hole in that first quarter. And Philly had a lot of confidence. Philly shot the ball extremely well from the three-point line, created a very good offensive frame of mind for themselves. And then before you know it, they get that lead, and now they're playing a bit too comfortable throughout the rest of the game. Uh, sure, I concur with Sherm, Randy. I, I, thought, I thought the move putting Korkmaz into the starting lineup was prudent because he replaced Th Thibault, and he's a better shooter. So. If you're going to double team Joel Embiid and we swing it around, odds are between Harris, Green, and 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 now um, Korkmaz, you're going to get a good open shot from a good shooter. And Korkmaz had 16 points in the first quarter, the first half, and he didn't score after that. But mm -hmm. he had done his damage, and it wasn't until later in the game that the Raptors started to sniff him out and go at him. So Doc probably decided – Hey, I'm going to go with the offense and try to hide them defensively. And as Sherm said, it worked. They got out. They got confident. I thought that made it really tough. It's, I mean, you're down 21. You come back and cut it to six twice. You've outscored them by 15, but you still have mm -hmm. work to do. Well, Leo, what happened there when they did get it to six? They did that twice, as, as Jonesy mentioned. Is it just you expend that much energy getting to that spot and then hard to get over that hump or... Well, I, I think that that definitely takes its toll, right? You dig a hole, you come back, you dig a hole, you come back. It, it's harder each time you do it. And you're not playing, you're not playing a scrub team. You're playing a good team. So it's extremely difficult. But, you know, I, I thought the Raptors got in trouble with, you know, they're obviously the three point shooting wasn't there tonight, right? It just wasn't there. And they kept, and, and again, it's a catch 22. They kept shooting the shot. They were scoring effectively in the paint. Yes. They were getting opportunities in the paint and they'd score consecutive in the paint. Then all of a sudden they take, go back to shooting the threes. Now I get it. That's, you know, you feel you can make that shot, but if something's working and you're not having success with something else, go with it. And, and mm -hmm. I thought, I thought the Raptors could have given themselves a better chance offensively had they continued to attack the paint, maybe get some more free throws. Uh, but you know, when you, what, what makes it even worse for you is when you dig a hole, you fight your way back in and you're missing, you're missing. And that's psychologically that, that, that hits you hard, right? It's hard to overcome that. So uh, I, I think at times they have to realize what's working, what's not, uh, and, 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 and play to their strengths to help them get through those times. And, and sure. guys, to add on to what you were just saying there, Leo, about the, the couple of times the Raptors got the game to six, I thought Philadelphia made, plays at that point they made a shot yeah. they made a good decision they had something go their way in those moments those crucial moments and and the Raptors at that point expending energy to get back and you need everything to go your way at those junctures yes. and then Philadelphia makes a play or the Raptors that turned the basketball over and Philadelphia capitalized so again as much as the Raptors work to get back in this game you got to give Philadelphia some credit because those were breaking moments and they bent and they didn't break Philadelphia did in those situations right well Jonesy the reason why that the Raptors were able to hang tough so to speak in this one was the job they're doing defensively right after that yes. first quarter and and specifically the job on Joel Embiid what is going on there uh, you know we had a chance to uh to have a, a chat with uh, coach Jama Mahalela and he, he wasn't giving away any state, state secrets but he hinted to us just just kind of look at the way we're mixing it up. So I, I, I charted, I charted Joel Embiid's touches for the first three quarters of the game. 
Um, in the first 15 touches, Philadelphia only scored four times. Hmm. They sent double teams at him. Um, they double teamed him away from the basket. Uh, I mean, he scored on, on the first uh, uh, play of the game because the double couldn't get there. He had such good low post position, but they lobbed it over Fred's head once. The weak side was there to come over for a block. They double teamed, enticed him into a cross court pass, shoot the gap. I, I just thought they, they did a wonderful job on him. And it wasn't Joel Embiid, it was the other guys that were hurting them. And then to Sherman Leo's point about you, you get those stops, you've got to convert because when your margin of error is that small, you can't have those mistakes. And look, mm -hmm. I give Nick Nurse credit. You know, last year, yes, part of it was Marcus Gasol, part of it was Serge Ibaka. But the way these guys are executing the scheme right now uh, seems to be frustrating and making it difficult for Joel Embiid. Boy, that's a formula that Nick Nurse has in a bottle, and he might have to use it come playoff time. And hey, Jonesy, you know, part 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 of that conversation with Jamma, uh, you know, he said he said something that really impressed me. You know, Nick just kind of looks down and says, "You know what? I don't care about these. Here's what we're going to do. Here's how yes. we're going to play." Yes, and and it, what really drives me nuts when you watch a lot of games is how coaches are reactive. They're going big, okay, I'll go big. They're going small, mm -hmm. I'll go small. Nick's Nick's going, no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to play this way. You react to me. You deal with me, okay? I'm going to try to create the problem for you, uh, and I just like that kind of approach. I think that approach gives your players confidence, uh, and, and certainly, uh, you know, obviously, you know, it fell short in in, in this game, but. You know, when you're playing a team with, with Philly's size and, a, and supposedly a dominant big man, and basically he's not a dominant big man playing against this team. So uh, it was other guys that hurt them, but I, I'm impressed with that kind of approach. Sure, Sherm, we talked about this in, in, when we did the radio, right? Nick Nurse is, he's not afraid to have other people look at him and say, oh, you can't do that, right? He, he, he's not afraid. No, absolutely not. And you know, I don't know how you guys feel, but I look at this game and this was an endearing game. This was one of those games where if you're a Raptor fan or if, if you're a, a person just looking at the Raptors, this is why you can support this team. Yes. They mm -hmm. play so hard. And even, I don't know, that last right thing, to minute the end. and a half <laughs> seemed like it was a half hour for that minute and a half to take its course because the Raptors continue to fight, continue to make plays and just continue to hustle. Yeah. This is the kind of identity that the Raptors have developed. And now that they're getting back to that, we're going to see more wins and losses. And we're also going to see them be that team that we feel confident can close games out because that defensive energy and presence is there. Hey, Sherm, yeah, Sherm, I, I, I talked about, sorry, Jonesy, I talked about yeah. it at the end of the game. We had a shot of the huddle, right? And I'm looking at some, this is a team that's fought back, you know, the, the, the game's technically over, right? They're just not giving up. And you could see that, like Fred's, you know, high fiving, they're fisting, they're talking, they're going, and, and they just believe. And, and they're actually getting, uh, you know, actually getting joy out of the fact that they Philly, Philly can't get rid of them. They can't get mm -hmm. out of this game. Uh, so you're right. I think they're very endearing to fans to watch them. Randy, I want to ask you this and, and, and to all of the guys here. With 21 seconds to go, it was a two possession game. Yeah. Right. And they were pressing on the baseline. It was, it was like it, they were down six with 21 seconds, and you kind of look and you went, wait a minute, a steal and a three here quick, and like yeah. this thing isn't over. And, and, and even when we had the whole fiasco with was it an inadvertent whistle, like was it not, was OG out of bounds, when he got the explanation he didn't like it, Nick Nurse just kind of clapped his hand and said, okay, all right, let's go back and get it again. And, and Sherm, mm -hmm. to your point, that's what makes this team so great. Well, it's interesting for me because when I look at the Raptors and I see that toughness, I, I, I want to root for them. I'm, I'm excited to root for them. And on the other side of that, I'm watching Philly. You know, they don't fold, but it just seems like they're lacking this mental fortitude or this player, this, you know, as good as Ben Simmons is, as good as Joel Embiid are, I don't know how you can be afraid of them. Like, Sherm, do you agree with that? Or am I off my well, rocker here? <laughs> well, you're always off your rocker, let's be honest. But I, I do think that <laughs> Joel Embiid is the type of star that he's he's a little bit too emotional and he's a little bit too nonchalant when things aren't going his way. You know, you look at guys who are stars, like a guy like Giannis, he's going to elbow somebody in the mouth and get thrown out of a game on a flagrant foul because he's, he's upset, he's bothered, 
he's trying to win. And I just don't know if Joel Embiid, as a leader for this team, is the type of guy that when the chips are down and it gets real tough and things aren't going his way, if he mm -hmm. wants to saddle the team on his back and pull them along. So yeah. if you're Doc Rivers, that's a tough situation to be in. But I agree, Herbs, I don't think this is a, is a mentally as tough as the Raptors are in terms of being down and digging things out and saying, we might go out, but we're going to leave everything on the floor. They're great yeah, front sure. runners. They're great front yeah. runners. Yeah, Jonesy, because like you know, we saw it, we saw it in the playoffs a few years ago with Embiid, and and here's what I remember, and maybe this sums it up. Here's what I remember with Embiid when they lost. You guys remember what Embiid was doing after the game when they lost? He was crying, he was crying, crying, tears. crying, tears just streaming down his face. If that's you, Jonesy, if that's you, Randy, if that's you, Sherman, you're crying. You're just so distraught after this game. What's your next step? What's the next oh, thing you do? I, I, hey, Seek in, in, and kill. Seek in, and I'm, kill. I'm in the gym yeah. the next day. All summer. Yeah. I'm working All summer. on my body. I'm changing my conditioning. I'm doing everything because I am so upset that we lost. He yeah. came back the next season. It was the same stuff. Same stuff. And to me, that tells you, and I, and I, met, I mentioned this during a game, that his body language to me is almost depressing sometimes. And, you know, look at Fred. Fred didn't have a great offensive game, but his body language is, I'm not quitting, let's fight, mm -hmm. let's play. And people and his teammates feed off of that. I don't think Philadelphia feeds well off of Embiid's body language. Well said, Leo. Got, got to leave it there, guys. I appreciate it. Great chat as always. And, I mean, among the four of us, I don't see any of us crying but Sherm, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> that's what happens when you achieve stuff, Irv. You wouldn't know about that. <laughs> oh, man. All right, we got to go, guys. Tomorrow night against the Heat. See you then. Hey, Randy, right. don't talk trash to players, brother. Don't talk trash to players. <laughs>